Hi. I think whoever manages to go through the day succeeds in finishing the year um, successfully. Um, <clears throat> the A graduate school uh, started in 1974. Uh, I was one of the first students who joined it. And it's quite interesting that before there was an interest for the master's program, there was an interest for PhD quite early in, in the 1970s. And in fact, we did start having uh, PhD students uh, at that stage. And this grew very quickly into something like 30, 35 uh, students by the early 1990s. Um, at which point it became important that um, we try to get together uh, and um, organize ourselves as a program that uh, brought together the various streams that had developed since then um, as the graduate school was growing and new programs were being started. And so the joint PhD program was started um, <coughs> for the first time in 2004-05 um, and, and has been quite successful. We've had 40 successful PhD completions since that year. Uh, which I think for, for, for a school of our size is a big deal. And then PhD in architectural design became an interest and continues to be an interest and this option was launched in 2010. And uh, as we start this academic year we now have 22 new and continuing uh, PhD students of whom nine uh, are a PhD in architectural design. And the areas of PhD research, in fact, to a large extent, mirror what we have in the master's programs. The, ma the master's programs are like factories generating new stuff and uh, experimenting with it, and then ideas grow out of there, needing further research that will take longer than the single academic year. And uh, that is a good moment, perhaps, for people uh, to consider uh, the PhD. Um, and w we have these areas of architectural history and theory, architectural urbanism, emergent technology, sustainable environmental design as continuing areas which uh, uh, have had PhD research now for quite a few years. And there's a new option um, which is described in the prospectus of city architecture as a new stream within the PhD program. Um, but why a PhD? Um, <clears throat> as you will see, in this academic year, uh, the knowledge that you will acquire will be quite explosive and, and perhaps sufficient for many years. So why a PhD? Well, there are some advantages of the PhD. It, it is the highest academic uh, qualification. It is a challenge by definition, and, and, and if it isn't, then you make it as you go along. Uh, it does force you, and you are prepared, to go in-depth in acquisition of knowledge in your selected field. It is also more general in, in the sense that by acquiring the research skills that allow you to deal with your topic, then you are able to continue doing research. And in fact, that is one of the criteria by which a PhD student graduates successfully, uh, becoming capable of doing independent research without supervision. And well, one hopes that if you're spending two or three or four years, then there will be some original work um, which hopefully makes a contribution to knowledge that gives you the opportunity to network, to meet other researchers involved in the same field, and therefore hopefully becoming known in your field. So there are these advantages and these reasons for one uh, going toward the PhD. Uh, here at the AA basics of the PhD, how does one qualify to be accepted? Well, we look for a master's equivalent in, in terms of background academic qualification, or even better, uh, <coughs> following directly from your year here. Uh, having done an MA or the MSc or the MARC or the MPhil, Projective Cities, and, and continuing um, for the PhD. Uh, typically, the duration has been of four well, calendar years, 
Uh, the AA is such an attractive place that people uh, don't want to leave. Look at me, I haven't left it since 1974. Uh, <coughs> and, and people tend to want to linger. But that does not mean that a PhD must take four years. And in fact, I think there are much faster routes to it, especially when starting from a master's at the AA and then uh, there's a possibility of doing it within a couple of years after. Um, <clears throat> it's a supervised one-to-one -one relationship with staff. So there's a director of studies who gets um, appointed from, from the start to look after the candidate, together with another supervisor. So there's two supervisors, uh, maybe more if needed. And um, we start with an attendance of uh, selected courses. Um, <clears throat> from the graduate school based on the topics and the areas of research and then also possibly from outside the rest of the school special lectures and so forth um, <clears throat> with the intention of putting together a research proposal which uh, now we hope and expect to be formulated mostly by the end of the first term at the AA by the end of term one that is around December which then gets assessed, approved, and becomes registered and, and starts the process, the formal process of, of the PhD, which also goes through formal assessments every year, um, and, and then work in progress presentations internally and hopefully also externally. And, and, and we now uh, hope and expect our students to be able to attend international conferences and present work and, and have it published uh, while they're studying. And the process finishes formally with an oral examination. Now, there's quite interesting uh, differences in, in, in the way in which in the UK we have the PhD compared to how it happens in other countries in continental Europe or in the US. Uh, here it's a much smaller, much more direct, much more one-to-one -one relationship both in terms of uh, the way in which the work develops and the way in which it is assessed. It is assessed as in a very small room with only two people and you. And hopefully the supervisor, one of the supervisors being there in the room as a silent observer. And at that moment you realize how strong you have become uh, after 30 seconds of nervousness. That the knowledge you have acquired really counts, you know more, hopefully and ultimately, than the people examining you. It's a powerful feeling. Um, <clears throat> uh, the structure is very simple, that, uh, well, it starts with this very personal relationship. Every PhD project is a single and individual project. It gets registered as an individual project. You're on your own, so to speak and with the supervisors, but thankfully you're not on your own because there's a group of others involved in a similar way. And, and, and this is a list of uh, recent and continuing uh, PhD projects that we have in a variety of topics. Um, I don't have time to go into them, but <clears throat> there's a lot of information. You can find information on the site. <clears throat> this has um, <clears throat> presentations of each of the current projects. Um, <coughs> it's from our end of year review. So each PhD researcher introduces themselves, so gives a, a brief CV and there is an abstract of their uh, project um, and the title which <coughs> seems to be changing every year. Um, which I think is understandable that we start with certain ideas and then they develop and change, and it's good to be able to adjust to that. Um, <clears throat> it's, um, the, the, the role of the supervisor is very important, and not everybody can be a supervisor, so there's a process by which um, people become supervisors, and at the moment we have 15 or so uh, supervisors in the graduate school, or members of staff, uh, who are currently involved in the supervision of um, PhD students and um, <clears throat> you can find more information about um, all of us 
uh, in the prospectus and, and in the program guide. Then in the structure of the PhD we see the, the, the sense of the research group which uh, is characterized by uh, similar topics, similar areas of research and, and therefore gives the opportunity for people to come together, they speak the same language, they can talk to each other, they can share information, research methods and so forth and they can also organize um, events and things for themselves and, and so we have of various groups and uh, there are events that uh, take place from time to time that are generated, initiated, generated and, uh, and planned and implemented by the students themselves. And then finally in, in that structure we have collective activities, the kind of activity that brings together uh, the whole PhD program, um, the very delicate activity, uh, by the way, when we uh, sometimes realize we don't really speak the same language and an effort needs to be made in order to understand what the others from another field uh, are saying. Which um, you, 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 might, you might find funny if all of us are architects, how come uh, with, um, and, and, and we all speak English, um, say, how come we're not sure we're communicating and uh, I think that's one of the very interesting things that do happen in, in academia and uh, you can decide to communicate or you can decide not to. But as collective activities then we have presentations by the PhD students which are particularly important as they have finished and have something important to say and, um, and events that involve the whole program. And th th this was one of them. This was the last um, event that was organized last May, 10th of May, here in this room, uh, on the topic of the grid. And this gives opportunity then for a publication, again organized and produced, edited by uh, the students themselves. This is one of the booklets that uh, was produced after a previous symposium that the students organized on, on the topic of transparency. We've also worked in collaboration with the Architectural Humanities Research Association, um, which um, organizes events regularly and, um, and a symposium and conference uh, every year. And one of those was held here, organized by us. This year now, this, uh, well, this week is induction week, so the, the new uh, research students will, uh, will see the supervisors that uh, I will be talking to them also, and then they will be preparing to start attending uh, courses and so forth. Um, <clears throat> uh, our courses in the graduate school start next week, as you probably know already. There will be a seminar, a weekly seminar uh, by Mark Cousins on PhD techniques. This is probably starting um, next week too and will go on for the term. Um, the symposium is being planned. Um, the date is the 6th of December on latent synergy. Uh, there should be a call of abstracts out this week. This is also organized by the students and then we would expect that the, the, the new PhD students um, <coughs> joining the program this year uh, will be in a position to um, submit their proposals by the end of the term. Um, <coughs> there's a program guide if any of you are interested in um, knowing more about the PhD program. There's a program guide which um, um, gives 39 steps to a PhD in six stages, great detail. Uh, after examination there is a post-examination. Um, <coughs> it's not that easy to pass the uh, PhD examination in one go. So there's post-examination and then sometimes post-post-examination um, or re-examination. Um, <coughs> Uh, there's details of the organization of the program, resources, um, you can find a list of all um, successful PhD projects since the 1970s, I think we have about 100 uh, altogether, and then the um, um, CVs 
of uh, teaching staff. And actually that's about it. I will be hopefully seeing the new students this afternoon. Uh, thank you. I will come back in about an hour's time if you're still here to introduce the SED program. Thank you.